Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot says her city has a new public health crisis to deal with, racism. I am here today with racial equity and healthcare leaders to formally declare systemic racism as a public health crisis here in Chicago. At almost every single point in our city's history, sadly, racism has taken a devastating toll on the health and well-being of our residents of color and particularly those who are black. So the declaration gives Chicago $10 million in coronavirus funds from the CDC for, quote, healthy Chicago equity zones. But what about the rise in crime there? Local media reporting since Friday night alone, at least 45 people shot and five of those killed. One Chicago alderman, Raymond Lopez, says this, generational gang life isn't just something that's encouraged, it's almost revered in some neighborhoods. If you really want to get to what is at the heart of a lot of this, it is gangs. And it is the borderline collapse of the family unit in many of our neighborhoods. Lightfoot has avoided calling out gangs in our community as a source of violence in our city. So, Tammy, let's start with you. Is racism a public health crisis in Chicago, as the mayor alleges? Well, my main concern here, and remember, the liberals don't do anything that they haven't planned for that doesn't work within the overall narrative, which is that what they're facing is something that is at the heart and soul of the nation, something they can't escape, something that others are doing to them that will never end. It allows the left to tell people, people of color in particular, that their suffering will never end, that you must get rid of the thing that, that is doing this to you. When you cast this as a health issue, you are doing that literally, personally, to every other human being. That, in fact, if, if, if racism is a health issue, it means the people who are racist have to be eliminated in order for you to be healthy. It's not something, it's like what we're doing to, the, to COVID right now. It really signals that your fellow Americans, your neighbors, people who might not look like you, are something that is a danger to your very mm -hmm. life, that as they exist like a living virus. This is the problem with that. Sure, she's going to get extra money, and sure, she gets extra powers by saying that, but she can also remove herself and Democrat policies that have done this. The allowing of gangs in, uh, the right. unemployment, moving, having those neighborhood kids go into gangs, drug right. abuse, hopelessness. So that's the problem. This is another and shiny object, but it also yeah. casts everyone else as a danger to society. Well, and, and Leo, to that point, I, I thought the alderman, uh, alderman made such a good point. You know, he was saying that <laughs> gangs are really at the source of the problem with Chicago, and we need to focus more on the family unit. So my question to you is, how susceptible are young men to crime without fathers at home? Well, I think, first of all, it's a big problem. I mean, there's been a lot of fatherless homes. And I think the key here is that Lori Lightfoot wants to ignore that. Let me be as clear as I can, Lisa, on this. There is no systemic racism in Chicago. There is no systemic racism in this country. That is a democratic lie. I want to be clear about that. Lori Lightfoot is public enemy number one in Chicago. Now, she's not going to be able to move that $10 million. You know why? Because it's based on race. And just recently, she got nailed for excluding reporters. She's playing the race card because she's allowing people that look like me get killed every weekend in Chicago. This is a joke. This is a game she's trying to play. She's trying to win re-election, and she plays the old-fashioned Democratic race card in order to try to stay in office. There is no systemic racism. I'm sick of that. And key here is she is public enemy number one in Chicago. Leo, I, I wish you would tell us how you really feel. I, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure uh, it out. No, no, that, I'll tell you tomorrow. Was, no, I'll tell you tomorrow. No, I'll tell, no, I'll tell was, you tomorrow. <laughs> that was very powerful and so succinct as always. You know, Trace, how much of this do you think, you know, Chicago has so many issues, so mm. many problems. How much of this is a distraction from those issues? As we've discussed, 45 people shot, five killed since Friday mm. alone. Mm -hmm. And you keep in mind, those numbers are compiled late last night, Lisa. That's kind of how it works, and they're distributed Sunday morning. And so by tonight, those numbers are going to be a lot higher. Think about it. 45 shot, 5 killed. It happens every single weekend in Chicago. You know, I love Chicago. When, when Fox News Channel went on the air 25 years ago, I was the Chicago correspondent. We did a ride-along with a gang unit, and we would meet these 14- and 15-year-old kids who not only were in gangs, but, but the Alderman Lopez is right. 
they were proud of being in gangs. They felt like they had they had a home. They had you know a place of belonging. They were proud of it, and they would do whatever they were told. And, and you talk about how you how you solve this. The, the solving this is not pointing finger at race. Is going in on the ground and sending in mentors and coaches and and teachers and people to keep these kids from the hours of two o'clock in the afternoon until six o'clock in the afternoon when mom comes home. Something has to be productive in those hours. That's the way that you keep these kids out of gangs. It has worked in, in places like Baltimore, other cities around the country, including Los Angeles, and nobody is doing it. There's no Black Lives Matter marches in Southside Chicago every weekend. Why? Right. Why aren't they marching? Why isn't the uproar? Why isn't there this immense outrage across the country about what's happening in some of these cities like West Baltimore and South Chicago, Southeast Los Angeles. It's just not happening because it's not making cable news. Marches in the inner cities are not going to make cable news. If it doesn't make cable news, they don't care about it. Such a good point. And I, I think Leo had referenced the mayor also denied white reporters interviews. So it begs the question, why is she allowed to get away with racism for there? So a great discussion. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.